What's going on guys, T-Mart here, and last night we had a huge update to Pokemon Go, and let me tell you guys, this is definitely a step in the right direction. So they brought in some new features, they brought back some old features that people were missing, and most importantly, we actually have a working tracker system in the game now. So it's pretty similar to what we had before with the three-step system. It's a little bit different. We're going to talk about it today. It's very, very interesting what they've done. Let's hop into it. So starting off with the small stuff that they brought back, the battery saver mode is back in iOS. So make sure you guys turn that on if you're trying to save on that battery juice. Uh, next up, they also restore the XP bonuses for the nice throws. So like, you know, great, excellent throws, that sort of thing when the circle gets really small. Now those are going to go back to rewarding you XP, which is obviously very, very exciting. And on top of that, they've also made it so that it's stacks with the curveballs now. So if you throw an excellent curveball, you're going to get bonus XP for both, which is pretty cool. Um, they also added in a feature where you can change your name one time. Previously, you made your name when you first created your account. After that, it was, you know, set as that forever. Now you're going to be able to change it, but just once. So be careful. Think carefully. Let me know if you guys come up with anything created down in the comments. And uh, then finally, last but not least, we do have the nearby Pokemon scanner that's been updated and actually works now. So uh, this is a quote from Niantic. They said, we're currently testing a variation of the nearby Pokemon feature with a subset of users. During this period, you may see some variation in the nearby Pokemon UI. So basically what they've done is they've rolled out a, a kind of like basic version of the finder to everybody. So everybody gets it with this update, but then they also have a more advanced version that they're working on and testing out and trying to perfect that they rolled out to a certain group of people, like a, a small group of people. It's kind of like a, a beta version, I guess you could say. So it was just hundred percent random. Some people got it. Some people didn't. Unfortunately, I didn't get it, but we do have people on Reddit and stuff like that who I'll link down the description who have got it and have shared screenshots and the way it works and stuff. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's start off with the base feature that everybody has. So this is very similar to the step system, except there are no steps, okay? So what it does is it scans every 10 seconds or so, and any Pokemon that are nearby to you show up on that screen. What's nearby, we're not sure. Some people say it's 100 meters, some people say it's 200 meters, some people say it's 500 meters. I personally think it's in that 100 to 200 meter range, I'm not entirely sure, but it's something that you could actually get there by walking around and exploring. It's not a huge, huge, huge distance. Now. Obviously, it kind of stinks that they took out the footsteps because as you get closer, you're not going to know you're getting closer because the footsteps aren't going to move. But they've improved it in a different way that I honestly think is more important. And they've made it so that it actually updates on whether or not the Pokemon are there. So, like, when a Pokemon spawns, it will immediately put it in your nearby Pokemon kind of, like, tool. When a Pokemon despawns, when it goes away, it'll take it out. Or if you get too far away from that Pokemon that it's no longer in your nearby radius, it'll take it out. Before, if you saw a Pokemon 30 minutes ago, it would still stick in your nearby radius. It would still look like it was there, but it would be glitched on that three step and you would never get to it because it wasn't even there. So at least now you actually know what's around you. You don't know the exact distance to it, but you know it's within walking distance and you're 100% confident that it's there, which is really, really nice. Now, another thing they added in is they actually group the same type of Pokemon as one in that nearby screen. So let's say there are four Pidgeys around you. It's only going to show up as one Pidgey in the nearby screen to make room for the other kind of like various Pokemon to show up in there, which I think is kind of cool. And uh, then, you know, obviously the biggest thing, that, at least visually, that's changed is the grass behind the Pokemon. So you guys can see there's a grass behind my Magikarp right here. And uh, nobody really knows what this means yet. I've been trying to, you know, look around online and look on forums and on Reddit and stuff like that. Nobody's really figured it out. All the pictures I've seen have had the same grass behind their Pokemon as me, so I, I don't think it has anything to do with like distance from the Pokemon or anything like that. It could just be like a straight up visual change just to make it look better. It could mean that maybe, you know, you find that Pokemon in a grass area, so maybe eventually they'll add in like maybe some Pokemon have water behind it if it's near a lake or something like that. You know, if you're close to a body of water, I'm not sure how it works, but uh, you know, it's kind of interesting, I guess. We'll have to wait and see. Now, moving on, let's talk about the slightly more involved version. This is kind of like a, a beta that was rolled out to a small group of people, but it's a little bit more detailed and it helps you out a little bit more. So in the beta version, they split things up into nearby Pokemon and then sightings. Okay. So sightings are in the wild. Sightings are what we just talked about before. Sightings are currently available to everybody. You have to walk around in that 100 to 200 meter distance and, you know, kind of find the Pokemon. Nearby Pokemon are tied to Pokestops. So you can actually click on the Pokemon in the nearby, 
and it's going to show you what Pokestop that Pokemon is located at. And then you can click view and you guys can see it highlights the Pokestop on your map. So you can go walk to that Pokestop and that Pokemon will be there inside of that Pokestop, which is pretty cool. And you guys can actually see some video footage of this right here. And again, like I said, sources to all of these, you know, pictures and videos that I'm using are going to be linked down in the description. So make sure you guys check those out and give them credit. But uh, anyway, yeah, you guys can see this actually gives you an exact location of the Pokemon, which is nice, but they have to be tied to a Pokestop. It's not like Pokevision or anything else like that where you can see them out in the wild in exact locations. It's just around Pokestops. So uh, that's kind of the new feature that they've added in so far. That's everything we know about it so far. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I think it's definitely a step in the right direction. I think at least we have something working now. It's not just completely random and you don't even know if those Pokemon are actually there and what's actually happening. And then with this new beta, you can actually find exact locations with the Pokestops. Personally, I still really miss Pokevision. I think Pokevision was a fantastic tool that a lot of people really, really enjoyed and made the game more fun. And and I don't know, it's just, I, I wish something like that would be brought back, but at least Niantic is taking steps to improve it, and uh, hopefully they continue to do so. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching, I'm going to catch you guys later, and uh, more Pokemon Go videos coming soon. Thumbs up if you guys enjoyed and want more, peace out.